that challenge successfully. Finally, I say to the distinguished men and women there, please don't give us a panel beating constitution. We want a brand new constitution, which when presented to the people, including the poor people of Nigeria, will pass through a plebiscite. Thank you very much. And that was Mr. Chairman, his opening remarks finally declaring this open. Very quickly, because we are aware that one of the panelists would need to catch a flight, precisely Professor Fato Tomi, we would ask the next gentleman to be as brief as possible, please. We invite the conference facilitator at this point for a general overview of the conference, Dr. Steve Itigbo. Please, a round of applause for the gentleman. Excellency, Right Honorable Ritumi Chibweke Amichi, the Executive Governor of River State and our Chief Host today. Your Excellency, the First Lady, Deb Judith Amichi. Your Excellency, Dr. Guido Vest Wille, former Vice Chancellor and former Foreign Secretary of Germany. Your Excellency, Dr. Bernard Kushner, former French Minister of Foreign and European Affairs and founder of uh, Medicine Sound Frontiers and, uh, former, and uh, also a Nobel Prize uh, winner. Your Excellency Ambassador Daniel Benjamin, former head of counterterrorism, chairman of this event, my Lord Spiritual and Tempora, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by expressing my deepest appreciation to His Excellency the Governor of this state for this opportunity to again stand before you today to our give an overview, overview of this uh, conference. I must also thank him too for his uh, endless interest for, uh, for his intellectual engagement in trying to situate problems and finding solutions to the problems confronting Nigeria. Democracy as a concept is so broad a topic that that is why this conference will continue, continue and continue to remain as an endless exercise. What is of interest at the moment is this practice in Nigeria and how this has impacted on Nigerians and the, the country as a whole. Democracy from our elementary knowledge is not about ab absolutism. It's also not about dictatorship. It is the government of the people by the people and for the people. If this were, the, were to be the case, it would therefore follow that citizens should not be afraid of their government. Rather, it should be the governments who should be afraid of the people. This is the norm all over the world. But why is this different in Nigeria? That is why this conference has been held today. Preliminary. My thoughts will suggest, as Isaac Asimov rightly stated, that this type of exercise, that is any anti-intellectualism, has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. That is, in a way, individualistic. The collective is absent or somewhat short-lived because we are somehow fickle, have short memories, and we possess such great gift for self-destruction. The aphorism that the end justifies the means has resonated for so long in our psyche, but then the truth is that the end may only justify the means as far as there is a variable that justifies the end. Where therefore lies the variable if our great Democrats in Nigeria still tend to think that a stupid citizen is more likely to be honest than a clever man? 
This is why in a nation like Nigeria, where citizens unanimously maintain a conspiracy of silence, one word of truth would obviously sound like an explosion. Similarly, a democratic vote is like a rifle, and this usefulness only depends upon the character of the user. That is if such a user acquiesces to Abraham Lincoln's admonition that elections belong to the people. It is their decision. If they decide to turn their back on the fire and burn their behinds, then they will just have to sit on their blisters. I support and agree to these affirmations because I am a firm believer in the power residual in the people. This is because if given actual democratic freedom, they can be de dependent upon to meet any national crisis. This high time we entrusted the facts and allowed them to judge the truth and falsehood. The present security challenges confronting Nigeria, which is also part of the topics we are looking into today, is a result of the terrible tyranny of the minority, a minority of the political class that began the trend of using political talks who later transmitted to militants, whether be it here in the Niger Delta or in the northern Nigeria. This is the tyranny of the minority that also given Islam and Nigerians a bad name by virtue of the ongoing war on terror in Nigeria. The tyranny of the minority will remain in force as long as a majority of the same minds continue to remain silent, continue to fail to confront, lead, confront it gently. This is why, this is when they stop, the, the majority stop caring about feelings than they do about thoughts and ideas like what we're doing today. This, therefore, the self-evident truth, the self-evident truth in all what we'll be doing today is the aim of a constitutional democracy, which is to safeguard the rights of the minority and avoid the tyranny of the minority and the majority. What then becomes the case when the reverse is the case? The strength of the Nigerian constitution to be on the determination of each citizens to defend it at all costs and according to Albert Einstein, only if every single citizen feels duty bound to do his share, will this constitutional rights be seem to be secured. Gentlemen and ladies, while I will leave this place to give room for our distinguished speakers to address this August assembly, I will leave you with the words of Alistair Crocky, which captures the essence of this Freudian sleep in Nigeria today. The impossibility of an actual democracy is due to this fact of mob psychology. As soon as you group men together, they lose their personalities. A parliament of the wisest and strongest men in the nation is liable to behave like a set of schoolboys tearing up their desk and throwing their ink points at each other. The only possibility of cooperation lies in discipline and autocracy, which men have sometimes established in the name of equal rights. Thank you. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We will continue this program by constituting the panel of discussions. We'll start right away by introducing the moderator for this um, program, and he is um, a former Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt, a former Dean Faculty of, uh, Faculty of Social Sciences. Please welcome Professor Mark Anipo. And um, very closely to join um, the moderator, I'd like to welcome a human rights activist and former member of the House of Representatives, founder of the founder and executive secretary of Anti-Corruption Network. I welcome the very distinguished Honorable Dino Milayo. Please a round of applause for the gentleman. Allow me very quickly to also invite um, on the panel Professor Chinyere Stella Akuna, please. Um, she is the first female professor of mass communications in Nigeria. She is presently professor of mass communication at the Namde Azikwe University after serving the Anambra State Government as Commissioner from 2006 to 2014, as well as Chief of Staff 2012 and 2014, including Commissioner for Information and Culture. Other appointments are State Chairman 